Was there ever a time when you went out on the stage in front of an audience and felt shy? I ain't never been much shy. Uh... <laughs> Was there ever any churches that you went to where you played your banjo in church and sang? In the treasure? Church. church. I, I didn't play in the church. I sang in the church. I sang in the choir, but I didn't play my banjo and in in guitar in the church, no. Have you ever played right-handed? No, no. I'm, I'm left-handed, and I guess I'll be left-handed all the rest of my life. <laughs> Could I become a professional folk singer? How did I come become a... F Could I become... Yeah, oh, yes. Oh, sure, you can, I'm sure. Oh, yes, you can. <laughs> all you got to do is... Uh, Write your songs and sing them. How long do you think it would take? <laughs> huh? How long do you think it would take? Well, you're kind of young now. I guess you you ought to be you about 10 or 12 years old now. I'm about nine and a half. You're about nine and a half. <laughs> you want to become famous right away? Well, all I can say, you write you a song and sing it around like I did. And people hear you sing it. And uh, that's what made me famous, that freight train song. And I never did think anything about it. Didn't know it was going to be that. My hometown is Chapel Hill, North Carolina, and the train and the freight would pass, and we'd watch the train. When I say we, my brother and myself, we would watch the train, we'd go out to the station to play, and I, I just love trains. Just to hear the train running and to hear that shuffle it makes, that shuka, 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 shuka. I used to like that. We'd be under the tr trestle playing, train go overs and we my brother would he wouldn't get off on the track when the train was coming he'd get between the the balls that what you call those things and he just hang there until the train went over him well that was easy because the train wasn't very long it didn't have about two or three coaches on it and it soon passed over and when it's gone you see his head shoot up like this and he'd come out for one of the, we stayed on the railroad playing out to the station. And I remember when we got our first ride, the conductor knew my mother, my father, and he knew we was their children. He said, you little fellow want to ride? We said, yes, both of us at the same time. Well, he put us on, he says, get on. We got on the train and he kind of give us a ride to and fro a little bit. And I just thought I was in heaven then. That was the sweetest ride I ever had in my life. Yeah, I worked all of my life, every kind of work. I cook, wash, iron, scrub, any, any kind of work come around. I did it all of my life. I'm more happier now in my life than I ever was because I can make money. I made it before when I worked, but it looked like it was such a little. But now the money is mine, and I, I can, I take care of myself pretty well. I want to tell the children this. When I was a little girl between 11 and 12 years old, I went to work for a lady to buy myself a guitar. Uh, the lady paid me 75 cents a month. And after I worked for a while, she says, we're going to give you more money. And they gave me 25 cents more, which made me get a dollar a month. 
I saved this dollar and gave it to my mother. Ask her to buy me a, a guitar. When she came into the guitar shop, she says to him, how much is the guitar? It might be more money than I'm able to pay. So he says, I'll tell you what I do. Your little girl, want to, uh, guitars are bad. You may have it for $3.75. And that uh, guitar was named Stella. They don't make guitar Stellas now. They're all Martins and Gibsons and something else. So Stella and I were good friends. I love Stella and I think Stella loved me. I banged it all, all the time, night and day. My mother used to say, put the thing down and go to bed. I said, let me learn this. I'm learning a new tune, Mama. Let me play this. story behind that song. Um, a lady told my mother one time that I sized her, I talked back to her. And my mother believed it, but it was not true. And mother made me stay inside of the yard. She wouldn't let me go out to play outside the yard. She wouldn't let me have any company. And I don't know how long that punishment lasts. It lasts too long for me anyway. So I used to lay in the bed at night and cry. Did, did your parents give you a lot of encouragement to play instruments? Well, no. They just thought it was nice to be playing. People used to cross the street. And this Miss Mary, when I made the, the uh, song, the verse about, they used to come to my mother's house and sit down, if I was playing, sit down and listen to me play, and it just said, you said and do play nice. No, you know, you didn't get, you, nobody said, uh, yeah, are you going to play this someday for your goal? Are you trying to make a career out of it? Nobody said that to me. Uh, I just played. How long do you think you will be playing and singing? Just as long as I can. <laughs> just as long as I can pick up the guitar and bang on the string. I don't know how long that's going to be. I've played it a number of years already. I'm already 85. I hope I can play it five more years. I tell a little a short story. I make it short. My granddaughter was with me. She was there in a wedding. She was five years old. She was a flower girl. But she lived in Washington. They sent her from Washington to Chapel Hill. When she was ready to go back, the lady that I worked for says to me, her sister's child was with her. She said, why don't you send Jane, that's my granddaughter, back with uh, her girl, Betsy. So she went on the bus. The bus driver come in and says, um, uh, is that girl with you? They were sitting kind of behind the, the driver. She says, yes. And he says, well, 
She can't sit there. You can, but she have to go in the back where the black sits. So they had a few words in the with. She said, just a little girl, somebody have to take care of her, but she can't sit there. So she took Jane by the hand. Jane is my granddaughter. Went to the back seat and sit back there. And when she sit down, <laughs> the bus man come back to her and says, uh, you can't sit back here. So she said, why? This is where the black people said, you have to sit somewhere else. Now, that's the kind of times it was. But for me, I, I never did run into things like that because I know what they want you to do, and I just do what they want you to do. If you go to look for a job, you wouldn't go in their front door. That was, I knew that. Well, I wouldn't go there just because I'm going for, I'd go to the back door, see? And I never did run in. Nobody didn't have to say, you can't do this and that and other. I was always treated all right, you know, but you just had to be, you and Jim Crow. We all people. My skin just blocking you all, but I'm, I'm, I'm a person. I have the same feeling you have. And I hope I got a soul to save. And we, it's time for all, all of us to get together. Because time is not long as it has been, I don't think. But anyway, I just want to sing this little song. I'm working on the building. It's a true salvation. I'm holding up the blood stain, a banner from a lawn. And when I get through working on the building, I'm going up to heaven to get my reward. So people, let me tell you, that's just like a job. You might have a job. You probably get paid by the day, by the week, by the month, every two weeks. But when you finish your job, don't you go to get your money or whatever's promised? Well, the same thing in serving God. You just serve him, and when you're through in this world, you get your reward in heaven, which is better than money. You get it, and you say that it's all over. No more pain, no more death, no more sick, no more sorrow. You're just there forever in peace. So I think it's time for the black and the white to kind of get together and love one another. That's right. Now, that's, that's the way I feel. I feel that. I feel it.